All right, uh, <laughs> a piece of mookite. And uh, you can see it's got a big turtle. It's got some crunchy Australia dirt in it. And uh, I wasn't going to video, but uh, I think I will. I'm going to put the camera way up so you can just see down. And, you know, hopefully it uh, works out for everybody. So it's not in my way. And, uh, you know, you can see, hopefully. Got one of my favorite sandstones to... Uh, start things out and you can see we've got some problems we've got this crusty stuff and we've got it looks like some cracks and uh, there's a crack right there but this is all got to come off anyway just got to decide where is best to to attack it this is a Probably soft hammer, hands, uh, sandstone. And, I mean, you always got to decide what you're going to lose and what you're going to keep when you're working a piece, you know, that's not, uh, not a slab. And even then, you still got to decide. It looks like, uh, I want to lose. See, there's all junk here, so I kind of want to lose that. I'm going to keep it nice and clean. See that? Now I'm supporting with my fingers underneath, like. Cause I don't want any hinges. I don't want to have to deal with hinges once I, uh, you know, clear this out. And I'm hoping to get a pretty decent knife blade or spear point um, to uh, to start stocking up my uh, uh, black locust archery. going to be building a website and if I get a little convexity see I'm getting some convexity here and I'm keeping the colors and I'm getting these sandstones where I live are, are like there's millions of them so you know if they wear out or break or whatever it, it doesn't uh, you know better than using the antler. I have one antler. I have this big antler and I have uh, an antler pressure flakers, a couple different styles of them. I'm what's called freehand napper because you see it's up in the air, it's not on my lap. And this scoop out I use Ooh. it's pretty hard there yet. Peel some of that. See, if this was my heat treated flint ridge, and I would lose, I would just chop this tip off and try and take a big flake there. But I don't know what's going to happen with this. And 
you know, obviously this has all got to go. And I want to stay away from this side. Let me try a hard, I think I've got a harder, a harder hammer stone somewhere. This is a little hard one I like a lot. You can hear the difference. Blasted all that out right there. And you can see that's well above center. You, you can do that. Um, uh, a friend of mine sent me some uh, artifacts from Texas, and I've been studying them. And I've been noticing the, uh, you know, the old boys weren't afraid to hit above center. I think especially in the beginning. It's so thick, you, you can't really break it. But that's how you can get, see I'm whittling that. I'm hitting above. If you, if you go like a lot, like I used to, and I was taught to bring that edge way down and then you can get this. But when you're doing that, you're losing width. Um, I brought it down some so I could get a good angle, but you could see it's starting to, you know roll uh, smoother and the more convex it gets pretty soon the flakes will start traveling and I, I won't have to move this center again I might want to abrade it a little bit now I'm making a knife to be used so I'm not going to thin this down to paper thin um, you know, this is going to be for actual use. And I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to use just stones all the way. I wanted to, you know, use a little bit of stone just to see how it would go. Um, I think I need to come back a little bit here. Now I scooped that down. Yeah, I got a step there, but this should give me a better shot to get this off. Yeah, see, there we go. If it was dark, you could see these two rocks sparking. But you see the turtles, you know, getting worn down. And there's issues still. This is all, you know, got issues. Um, and my main, uh, my main, my main drive is to Bobo, quit scratching my back to get them, uh, get this stuff off first. And then after that, it'll be golden. Nice. Coming along. It hit that, hit that pocket there and stopped but that's okay 
Let's take this back a little. I'm going to hit this for the rent money. Nice. <laughs> now here's a, <laughs> a much more powerful because I want it to be slower and uh, I want it to deliver more energy. And it didn't, it just crushed. See, this is all, this is all crumbly, which is what I was afraid of. Always put my finger up here on the tip. See, there's all. This is just a bad spot from this ash pocket or whatever that. I, mean, I don't know how this stuff forms, but it's like ash or maybe it's ancient charcoal or something from a forest fire. Okay, I flaked down. I'm pretty good below center now, right here. And we're gonna see if uh, there we cleared a good bit of it. There's a big crack thing right there, so and this is all gotta go, so Now we just got to get that island, the island of badness. That's the top down look so far. All the bad work is right here. I'm going to squeeze that with my fingers and hopefully make this flake wrap around. See, I squeezed it. I was way above center. I squeezed it and it, it wrapped right around. And that's how you get overshots when you're not trying to. You, if you're squeezing in the back, your flake will come through and dive in. So be careful of that. Let's uh, squeeze here. There we go. That's a nice flake. We're going to keep that flake. 
I'll pick through these uh, some of these and now you can see we're starting to uh, to get rid of almost all that stuff I'll just call it stuff and we're getting a lens shape on this side we're good on this side um, you know once I blast this uh, spot we'll go to indirect which will be copper because I haven't had time to make a antler or stone indirect yet I want to make this steep enough and strong enough for me to squeeze it squeeze it aim well hopefully keep that flake too well that's how you get over them turtles <laughs> and uh, that's with the hard hammer so you, you don't have to have that soft hammer to do Now that's a little, I don't know if I could get one there or not. We'll give it a try. I know it looks like I'm tilting a lot, but I'm not. I'm actually holding pretty much flat and hitting straight down and using the pressure of my finger to make that flake go uh, where I want it to. See, I hit there straight down and I made that flake peel over. Stupid spider. And uh, we're uh, <laughs> we're making good progress. I mean, really better than I expected. And it's keeping size. I'm not really trimming back and turning the edge this way, turn the edge that way, turn the edge this way. Um, I got a spot right there. Now it's a little iffy because this is pretty steep, but the stone's been working real good and that's a pretty good platform. So I'm going to try and uh, squeeze it and see if I get this to go in one chunk, look at that piece is going to be. And I should have measured it, but I probably only lost that little bit that was all crumbly. A little bit here that was super thin. You know, over here was super thin, and uh, you know, I'm pretty good so far. I'm gonna put my finger there to force it, force the issue. Ooh, went pretty good. I hit, I hit a little high, and I took a little more than I wanted, but it, it, it cleared. Uh, better than I expected now this is it's the hangy ledge and get rid of that oh, another baby spider and then this is too too isolated and too pronounced so we'll bring that back a little bit I know. Um, I never really did stone and antler and uh, on my channel before because, you know, the, the, honestly, the copper and the steel and stuff is um, faster. But I don't think it would have been any faster on this. Um, you know, so that's a good thing to me. And if you have good stone, you can use antler. If you're using like, uh, you know, that uh, stuff, other stuff I like to work, like that real low grade Texas uh, Pedernales. See there? Yeah. I think we're about ready. Yeah, we're kind of wonky, but looking at the shape, you know, right now, good hand axe. And, uh, you know, 
Now I'll go, uh, I'll switch. Maybe I'll do one. That's looking like a sweet spot right there to clear this. Uh, see, there's a, from the ball with percussion, when they, when they, whoever it was spalled this, there's a ripple. I might be able to get that whole piece. Now what I did there was I, I abraded to make an actual platform and then I went down to smooth this ridge. And then we'll, we'll support it. Uh, I went too thin. I need a bigger bite. Let's see if we can get a bigger bite. It did a good flake, you know, but it wasn't what I wanted. Let's see if we can, that's kind of an antler. Let's see what we can do here. Ooh, that was nicer. And then we can put it on this other side. Sweet. See there? Yeah. Keep that flake too. And there's the same kind of flake, but with a stone. So, looking pretty good. And we still got cleaning to do on this side, but I got that hump. I got, got a pretty nice, this side's pretty nice. Now, we'll go to the indirect because I don't really want to mess it up. Aluminum, half inch. Half inch steel, uh, six inch pipe nipple with the half inch brass cap. I don't use the cap for anything other than hitting the, uh, you know, as a stand in for antler or a wood baton or whatever. And when you use the metal, it's like boss mode, you know, the flake comes off. It might not always be the flake you want. My, uh, my bow shop is going to have uh, flint knives and, you know, arrowheads for you to make your own arrows, hand split hardwood shafts, and, uh, you know, stuff for guys to do their own. And I'm going to make stuff for, for people who uh, would rather just, you know, buy it done and ready to go. Um, you know, they just want to get their bow and go hunting. 
you know, I can't blame them for that. You remember how, how bad that looked when we started? It's starting to get uh, pretty nice right now. Now this is one of them uh, green, really coarse abraders. I don't like them too much because I think they they eat a lot of they eat a lot of stone, but they are a lot quicker. Now I supported that with my finger. I got me a nice little earring flake. I got to do a little bit of now this side is nice and flat now well not flat but uh, it's got a nice ridge which I like I like the strong ridge now I've got to uh, Get this little if you look this is a hump because um, if I don't if I don't take this hump out right here I'll have to lose a lot of length so I got to thin this you know I got to make some good shots and get this uh, hump out That one didn't go as far as I want. I'm going to try another trick. Put it in. Yeah, I got my step. You see it stepped? I got that off though. Because this side is thick. So I've got to work. Eating my aluminum for lunch on this side. We'll switch to copper. We'll do a little bit of It helps to have different tools, you know, when things don't go as you expect. Yeah. Well, there's a scary seam right there. It goes up through here, so. We've got to just worry about getting things regularized now. I got two boxes of this mukite, and I got one box in the cooker to, uh, to gloss it up for to make um, jewelry with and that's uh, I have a store uh, well it's not my store they, but they the store it's a uh, they buy my stuff so it's nice to have that 
Cherokee store trading post. Buy some of my stuff. Helps me to, uh, you know, have money to buy more rock. Yeah, there we go. We're getting most of our curve out. We've got some width we can use to thin this side. We've still got this uh, orangish brown as crunchy. I'm not liking that that much. There's a little slight hump. It's not it's not like an island. It's just a thick spot. Um, so I gotta wait until I thin down a little bit more and I can get that. But right now I have to make I have to make every flake count in order to In order to get the maximum size and uh, no, it's not going to pressure with my with my antler. Or I should say I'm not good enough to pressure this with the antler. Let the copper grab. And, Of course, it's been really humid, and this uh, pressure flaking antler isn't a shed. It's live uh, from a, you know, a harvested animal. I think they absorb water more than the sheds and get soft. Now I'm just going down through. Um, pressure flaking the... Uh, shape to see where I'm at thing I can say with any napping you know I'm not you know the, the super well known or you know I'm not even like the best or anything I'm just uh, uh, the guy that makes stuff to use if the I've found though for me the sooner I get to a smooth surface the better things turn out. And this stuff is sharp. That's wicked. I ain't even trying to sharpen it, and it's wicked. That is amazing. Oh, we need some.
See that? You can make a good pressure flaking pad um, platform by flaking backwards and then no abrading at all. I hope this was all in view because if not, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be sad because this is turning out really good. Nice, 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 nice. Still got a curve towards the tip. But I think that's just because this this down downward section, because this side isn't curved at all. Um, we're going to take a time out and review this and make sure before I finish this whole thing out that it's actually in, in, uh, in view. I would be sad if it's not. Thank you.